Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar where we'll be presenting the results of our Conversation Starting Annual SAS versus R survey, which has been updated this year to include Python. We asked our Quantitative Network one simple question, whether they prefer to use SAS, R, or Python. And over 1,100 responses later, we have some very fascinating insights to share with you. Presenting today's insights to you is Birchworks Data Science Recruiter, Adam Flugel. Adam has been recruiting for data science roles for several years, working with clients and data scientists in industries ranging from retail to video game companies to cancer treatment startups. I know you're all eager to learn what we found, so I'll hand things off to Adam. Thank you, Katie. Hey, everyone. Um, like Katie said, I'm Adam Flugel. Um, I've built out this huge dramatic build for the title here. Um, you all know what you're signed up for, and Katie already introduced me. So the drama is lost, but here we are, SAS versus R, with the first year of Python as an option. Um, as everyone knows, it completely goes without saying, the world of analytics is hot right now. You hear that over and over. Um, hot is probably a huge understatement. Data really is king, um, and to borrow a classic Spider-Man line, with big data comes big changes. I'm pretty sure that was the quote. I might have missed it up a little bit. Um, but both the market and the technology are moving at unprecedented speeds. Uh, with all these constant changes, it can be pretty difficult to keep up with all the trends, uh, even from just one day to the next. Luckily, we have a whole team of recruiters here basically keeping an eye on these things all day, every day, uh, myself included. And given our specific focus on analytics, Birchworks is really in a unique position to keep our fingers on the pulse of this feverish, uh, manic patient that we would call the analytics market. So we act as trusted advisors to a lot of job seekers, hiring managers, um, even professors building new analytics programs. Like a couple weeks ago, I spoke with a parent of a high schooler who's actually already trying to angle himself towards a career in analytics. Um, he's entering freshman year of high school, and he already is trying to figure out how to get into this field. Um, as you can imagine, with all of this advising we do, some questions come up time and time again. Chief among these FAQs is, uh, what tools do you see being used the most for analytics? So for the last three years, we've sent out a flash survey, um, so just one question to our database to quantify the answer to that question about what tools are being used the most. And finally, it's time for the big reveal of our 2016 results. Um, so without further ado, here are the overall results from over 1,100 data scientists and predictive analytics professionals. Um, so like I said, it was one question, which do you prefer to use? SAS, R, or Python. As you can see here, we're seeing nearly an even split now between a preference for SAS and R, with 39% for SAS and 42% for R as their preferred tool. Um, this is actually the first year that R has edged out SAS, even if it's just ever so slightly. Um, Python, which is the newcomer in this fight, actually is not too far behind. Uh, so 20% of our respondents are choosing that as their preferred tool. Um, it's interesting to note on the whole that open source tools, um, so that would be anything in green, R and Python, they account for 62% of the vote this year. Um, so now that we've seen the overall results, let's look at how these have changed and evolved over the last few years. Um, this is our third annual flash survey, and we're really starting to see some interesting trends. So as data science, with its unstructured data, custom-built tools, things like that, becomes a more substantial piece of the predictive analytics field, we're seeing an increase in the use of open source tools, uh, really year after year now. So Python has been gaining traction as an analytical tool, um, and that's in large part thanks to a lot of libraries and, and um, packages that bring some really robust analytical, statistical, uh, machine learning functionality to the table. That's why we added it this year in the survey. Um, and like I mentioned, 20% of our respondents stated a Python a, a preference for Python, um, though it still doesn't have the prominence of either R or SAS, which does make sense since those are both tools specifically aimed towards analytical work. 
So what kind of data science recruiter would I be if I wasn't really digging into the data here? Uh, even though we only asked one question, responses did vary substantially based on things like the industry that the respondent was in, uh, education level, even geographical region of the country. Um, so we're able to gather all of this very quickly, this extra info, just given our database and our existing relationships with our network. Uh, to start with, here is a comparison of the 2015 and 2016 results at the most junior level. So both of these results are just for the professionals with zero to five years of experience. I wanted to pull out this specific subset because this is where the biggest shift occurred uh, between last year and this year. And Python has almost a quarter of the votes here uh, for these zero to five years experienced people um, in 2016. As you can see, um, geographically speaking, open source solutions have the most support out on the West Coast, uh, likely due to the concentration of more data science centric firms like uh, Facebook, Google, Netflix, all those big tech firms. Um, Python was used more heavily here than any other region. Uh, it got 29% of the votes. The Northeast actually had pretty strong support for Python and R as well, um, and we think that this is likely due to data science hubs like Boston and New York. Uh, in the mountain region, preferences were also somewhat surprising when um, you can see here that there was a lot of support for open source in the mountain region. Um, and finally, the Midwest and the Southeast results are pretty similar to one another um, with SAS getting 46 and 45 percent respectively. Python fared the worst in the Southeast uh, where it only got 12% of the vote actually. So only 12% of our respondents in the Southeast prefer Python. Uh, confirming my suspicions from the last slide that tech companies were driving up the scores for these open source solutions, uh, our industry breakdown here shows that tech definitely does have the heaviest use of Python at 31%. And they've got the lowest use of SAS at only 23%. Um, on the other end of the spectrum, financial services had the lowest preference for open source um, and the highest SAS preference. More than half of the respondents from financial services chose SAS as their preferred tool, um, and only 15% chose Python. So Python has not caught on too much over there yet, um, though we'll see in the next few years what happens. Uh, healthcare and pharma, marketing services, and CPG retail also tended towards a preference for SAS. Uh, to us, it's really no surprise that the more junior respondents tend to use more R and Python um, since it's commonly reported that academic institutions prefer open source options. Uh, one of the reasons for that is just it's cheaper for the schools. Uh, we've already looked at the zero to five year experience results. Um, which is the bottom bar here. So we've seen this bottom bar a couple slides back. Um, but just to recap, 53% at this junior end prefer R, 24% for, prefer Python, and only 23% use or prefer SAS. Um, as we move up the ladder in experience, the open source trend backs off a little bit. Um, so of our most experienced respondents, which would be people with 16 or more years of experience, a whole whopping 54% of them prefer SAS, 31% prefer R, um, and this is another place where Python came in last place with just 16%. Um, again, when we're breaking things down by education, no surprising trend here. Um, so PhDs with uh, the highest level of education prefer R the most um, at 46%. They also use Python pretty substantially at 23%, um, and SAS was the least preferred at only 31%. On the other end of the spectrum with bachelors, the uh, you know, most junior education of our candidates, um, they have a less extreme case of open source fever with 47% preferring SAS. So almost half at the bachelor level still prefer SAS. Um, now, as a data science recruiter, this next slide is very much in line with what I'm seeing every day. This is, this is my slide that I'm seeing all the time. Um, this is how the results broke down for our data scientists versus our predictive analytics professionals. 
Um, so the dividing line here, of course, is that data scientists work with unstructured data, streaming data, um, really big messy data sets which require more computer science know-how, uh, more custom tools, working with some of those big data infrastructures like Hadoop and Spark. Um, unsurprisingly, the data scientists using all these uh, custom tools and things like that overwhelmingly went with open source options. Um, this is the one subset where Python actually got more than half the vote at 53%. Uh, R was chosen by 44% of our data scientists, and SAS just barely registered with 3% of our data scientists choosing that as their preferred tool. Uh, when you look at the other predictive analytics professionals, so this is everyone in our sample minus the data scientists, which is the graph on the right, um, the R results are mostly unchanged from the overall sample. That's 41% there. Um, Python, though, lost some ground to SAS. So 43% of our non-data scientists, predictive analytics professionals, prefer SAS, uh, almost half. And 16%, only 16 there, have a fondness for our poor little snake buddy Python. Uh, so what do companies want? What are the companies asking for? Um, you know, I've shown you what people say they prefer, but hiring authority, what are they asking for in this market? Um, we get asked this all the time as you can imagine. Um, and the answer is really it depends on the company, the budget, and the industry as well as the project they're working on. It really depends. I'm not going to leave it at it depends. I'll go into that here. Um, so many groups hiring for those traditional predictive analytics or marketing analytics type roles still strongly prefer SAS. Um, in many regulatory environments, uh, like we saw with finance and healthcare, it's also basically required. Um, R and Python are preferred in more of the data science groups, doing more custom tools, maybe building new systems uh, with less of that regulation. Um, but tools are really starting to blend and lines are blurring. It's not very easy to tell if someone is a data scientist or a predictive analytics professional just from a list of tools they're using. You really have to see how they're using them, what they're using them for. Um, there's, there's a lot of factors there and, and it's getting blurrier every day. Uh, maybe there will be a new tool on the scene. Maybe next year we'll be talking SAS versus R versus Python versus Quasar or, or uh, Blarg or something like that. You never know. There's new stuff coming out constantly. Um, but for this year, this is where everything stands. So let's go back to Katie here. Thanks, Adam. Those were some really great insights. Um, so where do we go from here? What's next? Well, if you're looking to explore new opportunities in analytics or data science, or you're staffing up your team this year, we should definitely talk. Feel free to send an e email to info at birchworks.com, and I'll be sure to connect you with the right person on our team. If you wanted to share this analysis with a friend or colleague, or review anything you may have missed, we've shared the highlights from this presentation in a blog post at birchworks.com slash blog. Um, I've seen a lot of really insightful observations in the chat box today already, and so I think we're going to have to continue this conversation in the comments section on our blog, so be sure to check that out. This presentation has also been recorded, and it should be up on our YouTube channel by tomorrow, which you can find at youtube.com slash birchworks. And be sure to join our next webinar in a couple weeks, where Linda Birch and Katie Ferguson will share analytics career advice for professionals at any and all levels in their career. That will be on Wednesday, July 27th, so be sure to be on the lookout for our invitation. Thank you for joining us everyone. We hope you have a fantastic day.